Goedemiddag, good afternoon, well, Wayne. Baie welkom by die eerste uitsending van Group Editors Live. Hier is een nieuwe initiatief van Group Editors waar ons, ons die publiek gaan inlig en een beter niespakket gaan aanbied. En wat anders als rugby om hierdie programma reeks mee af te skop. Ek het uh, later van die jaar van die wereldbeker rugby toernooi in Frankrijk plaas en natuurlijk sal die Suffikaanse publiek die toernooi met Arends oor dophou om te kijken of ons die titel kan verdedig en hier in die Suidkaap het ons natuurlijk ook een rugby span en hulle is nogal, word nogal die Arende genoem en hier bij ons in die atelier by die eerste uitsending Anton zijn welkom, baie welkom uh, Anton is natuurlijk staan bekend als Anton Moelman, Anton Couch, hij is een baie bekende africhter, hy het in die buitenland al afgerig Zijn is een voormalig sprombok, hij is die achterspeler africhter Al collega Klemen kan ook gelukkig niet hier wees nie, hy is die voorspeler africhter en dan kan ik me net sê, zijn is een local boy, hy ken die wereld, hy is een ander ken vir sy um, Gentlemen, welcome and we're going to talk rugby and uh, this year is an important rugby game but you just had a very part, a tournament of, uh, you played in the Manzanzi Cup you played well there and you, unfortunately you lost in the final tell us a bit about yourself the journey that you walked from with this team you started in February last year you were in France and then you got a call to must come back to South Africa and come and train the team tell us about that the journey that you walked till this year Yo, Eugene, I mean rugby's always been a massive part of my life uh, um, uh, played the game um, at a professional level, not quite the level that Zane got to, the, uh, but um, played there, transitioned into into coaching, uh, started the academies, the Western Province Academies down in Cape Town, and then I went and coached abroad for um, for four years uh, um, over in France. And um, yeah, you know, it was, it was tough times. We had COVID, we had, um, it wasn't easy for um, myself and my wife to be away from our family all the time, and we looked for a way to come home. At, um, and it's always been one of my aspirations to coach a um, Curry Cup franchise. So I really enjoyed uh, um, and grateful for the opportunity um, that I got with SWD. Um, the executive were great. We had a really good interview process, came back uh, last February. Um, did some interesting coaching um, interviews uh, with, uh, with with Zane and with Clem um, um, on um, uh, via, we were all doing Zoom to communicate. And uh, we hadn't quite sh shaken hands or met uh, uh, um, face to face, but uh, we made some great decisions, and we've we've uh, we've been a good team. Uh, we've uh, we've functioned well over the last two years. Uh, last year, being the Curry Cup, we reached our semi-final, really putting things in place. And this year, we've managed to take, we we took a step further. We got to the final um, of the Mzanzi Cup this year, which was a um, a ten-team tournament. We had the four South African first division franchises, including uh, Zimbabwe, Kenya, the St. Clemente Rhinos from the USA, and um, the fourth one was yeah. so Zimbabwe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, we, how did you get involved? Did Anton approach you? Oh, like Anton Look, rugby has been part of me since the age of eight, so I think. Uh, when I heard about coach coming around here, he gave me his text. I probably made up my mind already. I just need to know and get to know the guy that's going to lead us. I've always said if I can get a good leader, I can get a guy that can uh, put some good standards in place. It's easy to follow. So he came with that, and it's pretty much easy to do my job. Anton, this past season has been a much better season than last season. Tell us more about that. And how did you achieve that? Was it better plays? Was it better coaching? Or what, what would you say was the reason for the success? No, I think, you know, if you look at any successful franchise, uh, um, success is not achieved immediately. One needs to put um, systems in place. You need to put playing structures in place, coaching teams in place. Uh, you've got to develop uh, not only continuity within your players, but within the community. You've got to get supporters back. You've got to, you've got to develop um, the trust in your, in your business community, try to generate sponsors. There's a whole lot of stuff that goes together. It's not just what happens on the field. And um, I think the success this season is off the back of the hard work that we did last year. We managed to keep a core of um, that group. They transitioned over into our 2023 campaign. Um, with them transitioning, it was a lot easier for new players to come in, understand um, what our shapes, what our patterns were, uh, and, um, and to fit in. So that transition was a lot quicker. But on top of that, the, uh, I think the other success part of it was the, the fact that the community had seen what we're trying to do, what we're trying to establish here, 
Um, in SWD, we've created a Vision 2024. We have sponsors that have come on board. We had um, last year in 2022, I think we might, we might have had two or three sponsors that were on board, and this year we've had we've had close to close to 12. You know, um, at, you know, it's not about the amount that they sponsor, but but the, it's about every sponsor contributes towards the pool, and, and, and without that, the team can't survive. And, um, and and that allows us to project ourselves well in the community. And the massive object for us, you know, Zane's a, Zane's a, a, um, a George local, you know, he grew up in Blanco. Um, when he used to come watch rugby, uh, it, they, the, the, the stadium was full. We want to we, we fill the stands, we want to get the public back, we want them to be proud of a brand. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we want the youngsters to aspire not only to go play for the Stormers and the Bulls, which is obviously where the, the massive allure uh, lies, but we want them to 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 realise that the that there's a pathway through the Eagles as well, mm -hmm. and so our vision is to is to try and get um, uh, promotion in 2024. That's the promotion year up into the top tier Curry Cup. So next year is about winning the Curry Cup. So um, th this this portion of the year that we're going to now, where we start all our planning, all our um, recruiting, uh, um, is um, is vitally important. But what's vitally important uh, is that we take what we've learned over the last two years keep a core of, of that group together so that our transition into next season can uh, can can breed the, the the little bit of extra success that we had this year it needs to now translate into uh, um, achieving what our union's objectives uh, um, are and also what the groups uh, um, the playing groups objectives will be for 2024. Just, just to explain to our viewers, I think they must understand there's two competitions it's the Manzanzi Cup and the first division Curry Cup is that correct? Yes, yeah. uh, and you nearly played in the final of the first division Curry Cup this coming weekend, but you were a bit unlucky. Yeah, we um, um, last year it was semi-finals yeah. of the the Curry Cup, but obviously four teams qualified. This year yeah. there is no semi-final. Oh, we finished third in the Curry Cup. Um, uh, unfortunately, our start to the season wasn't uh, uh, what we wanted, um, but we, um, we we we. We pretty much dominated the um, uh, the Mzanzi. Yeah. Uh, we lost one game. There were one or two games that um, that didn't uh, um, uh, materialise due to some of the the, the, the foreign sides um, uh, um, not being available to play. But it was a uh, we, we played some great rugby. We, we beat all our local franchises in the Mzanzi Cup, which was a, a big plus. Big plus for us. Yeah. What's your impression, Zay? My impression no, is definitely a curve on from what we started on. Uh, 2022, and I think um, obviously under no illusion what it's going to take to to up and better. That's what we already laid this year. Coming on next season, that that depends if the boss wants me around. So we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, I think um, in terms of what we set out, it was pretty much part of our goals to to go through to to, to both playoffs in the respective competitions. Unfortunately, we fell short. As you've heard, we've uh, we what was that one out of three in the start, yeah. or zero out of three in the start, yeah. and if you look look at that as the local teams from South Africa that came to bite us in the arse in the long term, and um, that's why we probably uh, not on the pitch this weekend. You had a difficult few weeks. I remember there was uh, the semi-finals. There was uncertainty who's your opponent's going to be, and. Then the match was on, and then the match was off, and then there was an argument about where the match should take place. Did that influence you in any way in your preparation for the last week? And then you went to the final, and you unfortunately lost. Uh, tell us more about that. Was it was it was it harmful to you guys, or what? did it influence the, the spirit in the team? So you want to take that one? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's different. Look, I think. Um, um, from an admin and uh, behind the scene perspective, yeah. um, that's probably stuff that I don't really get involved with. Yeah. Yeah. We and uh, but you play rugby. That's what your yeah, main job is. As a coach, I think we were unfortunate not to play the two games, mm. which was uh, we were due to travel to Kenya and obviously to Zim. Yes. And I think the fact that um, the rivalries between Poland and SWD oh, sure. over the couple of over the couple of years, it's something that I have to come to custom now, lately, and uh, you could evidently, you could evidently understand and feel the tension once those two teams are coming up against each other, especially at the end but, of the match. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was post-match, but I, but I, but I definitely, I think, the fact that we had to play them, regardless of where. Sure, that, that's. Uh, 
I'm pretty confident the result would have been the same. Exactly. And I think uh, how it eventually played out, the way the game uh, <clears throat> had to be brought back for that weekend to be played, mm. I think our guys was so well prepared. Yeah. Not just only from a technical perspective, but from an emotional uh, perspective as well. I think, as I said, regardless of where that result would have went our way. After the yeah. last game, you lost it. I watched it on television. At the first minute, there was a bit of a problem, but you came back. Do you think you could have won that match, or is it it's something of the past? Or how, look, why I did you lose? I look, you know, I think I think the mark of our side is that we've been uh, um, some of the highlights of that game. We, we you know, the, the, the as I said, the, the mark of our side this year is that we've been able to to dominate halves. Mm. Um, we've we've come from behind. We've led from the start. Um, on the weekend, we started off, we started off on the on the back foot. We conceded points really early, mm -hmm. and um, we just never really got back from there. Yeah, it was sure. a it was a it was a case of um, uh, you know I've got to give credit to to the Falker mm -hmm. on the day. Uh, they they applied pressure. They never allowed us to um, to get up uh, uh, um, any kind of strangle hold on the game, yeah. and uh, we were playing catch up rugby. Yeah. Um, for a lot of our youngsters, and I think this is this is part of our growth. Um, and as a coaching team, this is what uh, what we recognise is that we've gone semi-final, final. Um, for some of our youngsters, this is the first final they've ever played in, mm. especially as a professional player. We've got a really young group. Next year, they'll be richer, wiser for it, sure. and they've got to take this experience and they've got to make sure that it translates into us taking the next step. Um, and um, but yeah, you know, it's uh, um, congratulations to to, uh, to to the Falker. I think that they. Um, uh, um, they thoroughly de deserve the win on the day, yeah. um, but from a coaching perspective, um, we might have lost the game. But under under no um, illusion that uh, if we faced Falco mm. tomorrow, we 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 are full of confidence that we can go out there and turn that turn that kind of result around. We we, we had a, we, we had a bad day on the day, yeah. um, and we, we'll be better for it next time. Coming to the end, but I was fortunate to be attending that function on Monday evening. Was it yeah? when you made some certain awards to the place uh, to, to, to thank them for the, for the job this year. Uh, and, and what was their game? Um, Adrian van der Bak, he was a player of the year. Unfortunately, he's leaving, is that correct? Yeah, I think um, coming down to the end of the season is always mm -hmm. is always important. Um, valuing the guys that is that's putting their time and their bodies on the line for something that we believe in and we have to get them to believe in that same vision and that goal. And I think overall, falling short of the final eventually doesn't really uh, conclude the season into where we've come over the last. Um, for a lot of people, we're talking about two years. Mm. For us, we're taking months and time and on field and in, 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 in prison with each other. We're talking about 15 months versus an environment like uh, the Falcons. I mean, majority of those guys in that group and the depth of that group has probably been been together for the last five years. Mm -hmm. um, so I think um, on Tuesday that was just the that was just the cherry on the cake for these guys of uh, for their hard work. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, obviously, I mean, we're pretty pleased. Unfortunately, that the individuals have to leave the environment, but the fact that they can use our platform as a stepping stone for embedding themselves yeah. going forward in their careers, as previously mentioned that. Um, if SWD is going to be that pathway to greater, greater pastures and and and, mm. and greener fields, so to say, for for for, for players, um, yeah, that's a job yeah. well done. I don't want to go off track, but talking about that, isn't that a challenge that you've got here? At people, when they just they in, in kind of Afrikaans or Slavic, they're not only gefestigd, they're not going to the greater things, they're seeing here ons the greater things is potential. Is it not? Isn't that a problem for you guys to teach, to keep the guys here? Yeah, I mean, um, and then also the clubs. The clubs are very important here. No, look, I mean, the cl clubs are obviously um, vital. They're the, they, you know, they're, they're the foundation that um, mm. not only SVDA is built, but the uh, um, South African rugby is built on a, mm. on a on a solid club foundation. But the nature of the beast is is that the uh, um, you've got a we've got great schooling structures, sure, yeah. um, and um, you know we've got Craven Week taking place here in um, in a week's time, and the top talent mm. will be. Uh, um, scooped away by universities, unions, to uh, um, to go in, uh, um, play varsity cups, play junior, uh, um, provincial rugby, and filter into the mm. into the four big franchises. You know the, but I think the, the role that we have to play is that is that not all the talent leaves. 
um, and some of the talent does leave, but then does come back to the uh, to uh, um, to our area, you know. But uh, um, it's a we need to be able to. I've got an interesting uh, um, philosophy in that. For the we we talk about the cream, the cream being taken away. But there's a lot of players just below the cream that have been stirring that pot so that that cream comes to the top, you know. And and, and what happens to those players? And those players are end, ending up staying staying in George. Um, as a family nowadays, a lot of those kids aren't getting an opportunity to go to university. We we've got to, for if this union wants to to grow, if George wants to grow and become a uh, SWD wants to grow and become a a, 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 a hub which I believe we can for, for South African rugby we have to cry, try and create some kind of tertiary university structure here, sure. um, so that we can we can start uh, developing our, our own um, uh, development pathways through universities into our senior ranks get the promotion into a top curry cup yes. uh, um, and then start competing against the best in the country Jylle rus net om die achter te sluit, jylle rus nie op jylle loure nie, jylle beplan al reeds vir die volgende seisoen, jylle gaan nou so'n bykie rus vat en dan beplan jylle vir die volgende seisoen en ek het so volkie oorvleid, daar is nog stommers westerij wat ook daar kom, is jylle reeds bezig om nou af te sluit op slot opmerkings vir die volgende seisoen, hoe voel jylle, is, is jylle, begin jylle rekker reeds vir die volgende seisoen? Ja, die, I mean, I'll, I'll let Zane take this one, but we've just, we've just finished with the entire process um, with forwards and backs, Zane you can elaborate a little bit further on that? Yeah, obviously you get to the end of the season. Just want to get a bit of feedback to some of the players, where they stand, clarity going ahead. And if uh, rest means a week, that's probably a lot in our days. <laughs> <laughs> no, look for myself. I never rest. I never take a day away from this game that I love. So respectively with that, um, looking into our younger group yeah. as we uh, are driving our attention to our 21s at the moment and see what the depth is within the union and within the within the district. And uh, I'm pretty sure that we will get a handful of guys that will come through and can put out their hand and then and, and form part of the bigger squad later this year again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So well, Zane, Zane and Clemmy will shift their, their attention now to, to the under-21s. Yes, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, um, I've, we, as, as Zane said, we've just finished doing exit interviews with all our players and um, we'll be discussing their futures, um, trying to create um, pathways for some of them. Um, the, the way this African first division and the way this African contracting model works is unfortunately our players are not on 12 month contracts. Oh, sure. So for a lot of these players, the next four months are uh, um, are uncertain times. Um, so what we've tried to do is we've tried to we've tried to establish um, income pathways for them for the for the, for for the next four months so that they can get some kind of um, uh, financial stability in their lives. Um, and then we've been working behind the behind the uh, and the lines with, um, with with new sponsors that are coming in board, so that we can try and look after our player welfare. Because for me, player welfare is paramount. If I don't have happy players, I'm not going to have a happy squad. And so we, that's been a massive focus of ours as a as a coaching team. Anton, zei baie dankie dat jylle kom deelneem met aan ons eerste program, want dit was om nou rugby terminologie te gebruik, dit was een heerlijke afskop, en ek dink, kijkers sal dan nie samstem, en al, al het jylle nou verloor, ons, ons bloed is nog steeds groen en arende boe. Thank you.